It's been a while since I tried the HomePod Mini to work with the Mac and back then I had quite high expectations and got really disappointed. So a year has passed, I bought a couple of HomePod Minis to work with my Mac Mini, <laughs> old mini family, and I gave it a test. Something got better, something didn't, and for some I found a solution that I would like to share with you. So if you already have a HomePod Mini and have some connection issues, feel free to use the time codes, maybe that advice will help you. But for those who don't have it yet, it's Alex here, welcome to the Geeks Table, and let's see if it's worth buying HomePod Mini in 2022. And well, in general, we all wish to have a clean desk that looks something like this. Mac Mini is a powerful and affordable computer with low quality speakers and no microphone built in. HomePod Minis, however, give us an amazing sound quality for $99 each and look really sick. This could have been an amazing couple, but well, you cannot power HomePod Mini from a Mac. I mean, the Mac Mini that I have has just two USB-C ports, so I definitely would like to use them with something else, like connecting SSDs or external monitors. But for a MacBook Pro, that could be an option because it has enough USB-C ports and, well, I would be quite happy to go around the flat with a HomePod attached. And actually, if we connect the HomePod to the Mac, it will recognize it. But unfortunately, the only thing that you'll be able to do is to reset it. So you will need a 20 watt charger per HomePod, each comes with one, so no worries. Or if you have these fancy chargers with multiple USB-Cs, you can use one to power a few HomePods at a time. Just be sure that each port has 20 watt output and you'll be good. I also have a USB-C on the back of my LG display and it supports up to 65 watt output if I'm not mistaken. So technically I can connect my HomePod to that port, but I use it for powering my MacBook, so that won't go for me. But in case you have that display and just Mac Mini, that could be an option for you. Okay, now let's set it up. You still need an iOS or iPadOS device to do it, and the process is straightforward and pretty simple. I think that this camera recognition UI is actually the reason why we still cannot set up a HomePod Mini from a Mac. But anyways, once you have it configured, you can do all the operations from your Mac via the Home app. All the settings and controls are available there, the same way as they are available on your iPad or an iPhone. For example, you can create a stereo pair here, and it will appear as a single device consisting of two HomePods. And I have good news here, because now all the apps can stream the music to a stereo pair of HomePods. No more walkarounds, just choose it in the sound preferences and enjoy it. The volume will be same across the HomePods and you'll be able to control it either from the Mac or from one of the HomePods. Also, you'll be able to tap any of the HomePods and they will play or pause any source that was playing on your Mac. If you plan to use it as your primary speaker with your Mac, then there are two tricks that I would like to share with you. They're both to improve the connectivity. So a HomePod mini is a standalone device. So once your Mac goes to sleep for like five to 10 minutes, it will disconnect. And once you come back, you'll have to select an audio source once again. So how about to automate this and make it simple? Every time I log in, the HomePods get reselected. For this, we need the Automator app, which you have on your Mac already. Let's create something new. And we'll need to create a new application. Then in the search bar, let's search for the run Apple script and drag it over here. In the description of the video, you will see a few links and the first one will lead to this document with this code of the Apple script over here. So let's copy and paste it here. Let's delete this and put here like this. Okay. Now go to the sound settings and check how your HomePod stereo group or just one HomePod is called. For me, it's called basement. And this is exactly this basement that I have here in the quotes. So you should replace this name with the name of your HomePod. So for example, let's say your HomePod is in the living room. So this will be exactly like this, but I will return the basement because that's the name I'm using. Okay, so, now let's save this application. Let's do it on the desktop. And let's call, call it select basement. 
Now let's check that it's working. Okay, let me close it so you won't be distracted. Okay, let's check it. So for the first time, it will ask you to allow you the access to the accessibility features. This is needed so it could actually go through the windows and say, okay, I need the system preferences, I need to find the sound tab, the output tab, and so on. So let's agree. Yeah, so for the first time it failed because it didn't have an access yet. Go to the open system preferences, to the security, and here, let me type my password, we put the check mark our application in the accessibility tab. All right, that should be enough. Let's close it. So now let's check that we have some other source selected, like this speaker. And let's click the select basement once again. Okay, let's check how it's going. And the basement is selected, so it's actually working. You may stop now and keep it as is. So you will just have this shortcut, which you will launch every time you want your HomePod to be selected. But as I said, let's automate this and bound this to the login. So in this case, we need to go to the system preferences. And just a side note, if you want the system preferences to be sorted alphabetically, just go to the view and select this option. So what we need is the users and groups, then select your user and select login items. And here you should add your application to select the HomePod Mini. And once you do the login, all the login items will be launched, including this select basement shortcut, and your HomePod Mini will be selected. And that's it. I hope it was not hard for you. The other issue that you may get, especially on M1 Macs, is that HomePods may simply not play sound from your Mac at all. The show desk connected, the music is playing, the light is there, but there is no sound or you're trying to switch to HomePods manually and all you see is this endless spinner. You can reboot your Mac, of course, or you can go to the Home app and reboot the HomePod mini. And surprisingly to do so, you have to click on the reset button first. And well, in general, that's quite annoying. So let's do another script. The idea is that there are three system items that we need to quit, so they would automatically restart and the connectivity will be working again. Okay. So we are back here and let's check that we have this issue. So our basement stair pair is endlessly trying to connect. So, okay, let's open the automator and let's create a new application. Now let's search for the run Apple script. Okay, here we are. Drag here. And let's go to the second link from the description that contains this code. Let's copy and paste it over here. So as I've said, we need to kill or quit three system services, which are listed here. And as you can see, two of the lines require the administrator privileges. So the script will actually ask for your password in order to quit these two processes. Okay, now let's save the file. Let's make the desktop more messy and call it reset HomePod connection. Okay. Now we have it here. So we see that we still have this endless connection to the basement stereo pair. So let's see if the script will help us. Okay. Launch it. It will ask us for our password. And if we go here, we'll see that the basement is here. We click and voila, we are connected. So if you already have the HomePod Minis, I really hope this could help you a little bit. But to those who do not have them yet, well, ask yourself whether you should invest in such a device that requires so much attention. But the biggest concern is the delay in the playback. I was really, really, really hoping they will fix it when one year has passed. But no, with every play and pause, you'll have a two seconds delay. You may check my original review of the HomePod Minis where I test all the apps, including Skype, Zoom, VLC, QuickTime, and others. Uh, the link will be in the description, but here is just an example.
And speaking of online calls, as a Mac mini user, so Mac mini doesn't have a microphone at all, so I really wish to use the microphone that's built in the HomePod minis, but well, I cannot. There is simply no such option. And what drives me crazy is that once I receive a FaceTime call on my iPhone, I can transfer it to the HomePod mini and use its internal microphone to speak. But when I answer my FaceTime on a Mac, I'm not able to do so. There is simply no such button. Okay, enough complaining, so to what kind of a Mac user I would recommend this speaker? If you listen to some music, watch some films, and you really want the HomePod to be a part of your interior, then you'll be okay with it. It has a great sound quality for the price, and it's a fancy stylish gadget. But you'll have to be prepared that you'll need a different solution for the video calls, or basically any professional work, especially video editing or audio editing. The two seconds delay just kills the experience. So for now, I'm returning them back again, and let's see if I'll give them a third chance. Hope this was helpful, thanks for watching, it's been Alex, and see you at the Geeks table. Bye bye!